the third day of the pilot, it was already working. We were standing on the Chicago River, and I turned to Peter Jankowski, who is the president of Waltham's, and I said, you know, there are three shows here. And he said, can we, you know, let's get through the pilot. I was just saying, because it was so obvious a night of first, not even a night, but a group of shows that are all about first responders, very much in my wheelhouse and what I like doing shows about. From your mouth to Mr. Nielsen's ear, that we end up owning Wednesday night. Uh, I love it and I hope the Chicago shows all run for, let's see, I guess fire another 15, PD another 16. <laughs> Everybody tied at 20, that'd be great. Yeah, I mean, there was a lot of cliffhangers. I think every single one of our characters had a cliffhanger. And this season, we, all of those cliffhangers will be answered. Um, especially for uh, me and April's character, I, I obviously, we know that we broke up because of the family situation, but you'll see more of that kind of intertwine as far as the season goes on, and more of my sister coming back within the relationship, and it kind of tugging us at each end from uh, particular angles. Yeah, I think so. I think uh, the one thing that Ethan has is empathy for all of his patients. Um, and he tries to help them at every moment and every instance. When it comes to his family, though, I feel like he's very guarded. I feel like he's been heartbroken uh, far too many times for anything to allow himself to kind of have empathy for his family members, especially his sister, Emily. Um, throughout the seasons, though, you have seeing Ethan kind of chip away at his armor and him grow kind of more into his family and social life, especially with April. And April, I feel, is, is the one that's really kind of chipping away at his armor. Um, the relationship that developed with April was the one that really kind of blossomed Ethan into wanting to help his sister. So I feel like the trajectory of the whole relationship as it moves forward during season four is, is gonna be like a tremendous, opening experience, especially for all of the characters involved. I mean, to be honest, we try to be as authentic as possible, and if art imitates life, I feel like we try to do our best to kind of give the men and women in the medical service its, its due. Um, we have some great and amazing consultants here. Um, what I like to do, though, at the beginning of the season is, is shadow. Uh, especially our, our lead consultant, Dr. Andy Dennis. And there's something about being in an emergency room and the vulnerability that you see within the, the patients um, at death's doorstep that you can't create or imagine unless you actually experience it. Um, so that sense of helplessness, but that also sense of strength from the doctors of wanting to help and wanting to try to amend and fix the situation is, is something that you can kind of experience and, and suck in, and that's what I like to do season after season after season, um, because there's this quality in there, that, that, that natural instinct, that, that essence that you can never ever really discover unless you experience it firsthand, that I like to bring into the character and into the season as we're treating patient after patient after patient. Yeah, I feel like what Dick Wolf has created is one universe, and he's no one has done it better. Um, Chicago Fire, Chicago Med, Chicago PD is, uh, in its essence, its own universe. Um, and all of the characters seem to intertwine seamlessly. And to be on one night, Wednesday nights, and see each show back to back to back, I mean, it is uh, essentially one television show that happens to run three hours. Um, on and off camera, there's something that is innately relatable to all of the characters, and especially the characters that have relationships with one another, because I feel like off screen, we all have relationships with one another as well. And there's this essence and this quality and this comfortability that you can't teach, and that I feel that audiences 
are drawn to. I feel like that essence and that quality and that relationship that you see on screen and that we have off screen is something that no other show or no other three shows ever have. Yeah, so uh, the last we saw at the end of season three, Connor just had a really successful surgery with the conjoined twins. And we see him and we realize that he's gotten an offer from the Mayo Clinic to leave Gaffney Medical Center to go uh, pursue another job. And when we come back for season four, uh, things are a little up in the air. Um, Connor is actually packing up his belongings to get out of here. But, you know, you never know what might keep him around. You know, I think the relationship between Dr. Rhodes and Dr. Becker is always a complicated one. Uh, they're both supremely talented surgeons who want the best for their careers, but there's an obvious attraction between the two of them. Uh, and I think the moment outside of the hospital at the end of season three, uh, when Connor was asking if Ava would have taken the job at the Mayo Clinic, I think what he was hoping to get back from her was that she wanted, that she would stay to be with him. Um, so I think there's always a little, you know, push and pull between them personally, uh, and sometimes the, the professional side of that relationship gets in the way of them actually being able to be together. You know, I think over the past few seasons and going into this next season, there's been a big evolution of where Connor was and especially to where he's going. You know, he's had uh, multiple positions that he's filled in the hospital. He's had two significant mentors. Uh, he's been through the ups and downs of personal relationships. Um, and I think, you know, one of the most exciting things for me is to see the growth and to be able to add that you know all of those layers to the character as we go further and further along in the show um you know it's exciting to see uh how a character grows and builds the deeper into uh, a show that you get and to be able to you know put everything that's happened in the past underneath what's going on currently to him uh, is always exciting and I think it really fills the character with a lot of um, you know history it's just he has a long history and I think they've got some exciting stuff for his future too you know I think there's something magical about what Dick Wolf has created with the one Chicago universe um, it's a uh, a world in and of itself and it's unlike anything else because you know on one any given episode you see characters from the other shows popping up on our show you'll see us popping up on fire or PD and it really creates this very convivial atmosphere off camera because we all feel like we're we belong to the same uh, we're all on the same team and so we enjoy each other's company. It's fun to go visit our friends on the other sets. It's fun to have them come and play with us on our set. Uh, and it's really, you know, I can't say enough that it's one of the most special experiences that I've had uh, on a job. And it really, it, it just, it's, it sort of defies description because it's something that we just all really enjoy and we know that we're very lucky to be a part of it. I mean, there's so many things that you can say about Dick Wolf. His legacy among television producers is unparalleled. His uh, ability to have his finger on the pulse of what people are watching and what they want to watch. I mean, the man has been doing it for such a long time and he maintains to he really has this ability to uh, keep relevant and keep producing shows that are relevant that people really want to tune into. Uh, and, you know, just to be a part of that world, you grow up watching something like Law and & Order and then watching Law & Order SVU. You're an actor like myself who sees friend after friend after friend do 
guest spots uh, on Law and Order and Law and Order SVU. You know, he's employed countless people in New York and so many theater friends of mine. And never in my wildest imaginations did I think that I would be such a large part uh, of one of his shows. And, you know, I feel very lucky to be uh, here in Chicago, and I be and I feel very lucky that uh, my experience is with this family here. You're gonna fall in love more with these characters that you've gotten to know so well over the past three years. Uh, you are going to f have all the high drama, the high stakes, the action that goes along with everything that happens in the hospital. Uh, and so, you know, it's just a really exciting season. We've got some great episodes coming up for the fans. And larger than that, you know, it's an exciting season for all of these Chicago shows because we're all occurring on one night and it really does open up this giant world of possibility for Wednesdays. Uh, and I think fans are really gonna love it. So Maggie is one of those characters that represents the core of the hospital. If you've ever been to a hospital, you have all these nurses or these staff members that run around and hold the whole thing together and you're wondering, oh, she fixed that problem and this problem. You're not sure where she actually um, lives, you know? And I've come to, to, to discover that, that Maggie represents People that just love the institution of medicine, that just love healthcare, that love seeing people go from a place of being ill to being wholesome. And last season, it was the first time after a couple of seasons where you were introduced to Maggie's personal life. And even then, I don't think Maggie was comfortable with this idea of, of climbing up the ladder of medicine and having this relationship where she really got along with him. It was a good relationship, but she still didn't feel comfortable with him. Now, I'm not saying that he's not the guy or he is the guy. I'm just saying that at the end, you're wondering, is she staying in this relationship or not? They went through ups and downs, you know, betrayals all throughout the season. And still Maggie was moving on, moving on to everything that was going on with her friends. There's a depth to the relationship that Maggie has with each character, even talking even with Dr. Charles, going all through down the line with my relationship with Manstead and um, Dr. Choi and um, Nurse Sexton. There's a depth to our relationships where it, it, you feel like it's, it's a champagne bottle, you know? There's all these pressures from trauma after trauma coming in and you feel like this champagne bottle is gonna pop. Dr. Rhodes leaving is very difficult for Maggie because um, he's really quickly developed a relationship and he's, he's, he's trusted her to share some private stuff and you, Maggie and Dr. Rhodes have this really shorthand conversation when they see each other. It's very rich as a relationship. You know, and uh, I think there's something about Dr. Rhodes and Maggie's friendship that, that Maggie doesn't want him to go. So I think people are finally gonna get a chance to experience what we live here, which is all three shows, we shoot really close to each other and how close we really are. And in the experience that we're living, just being from far away and coming together in this one city, we are one big family. Like I know David and I know Eamon and I know Jesse from PD and you know, um, I don't know that we spend a lot of time together because we're this nucleus that come together and we finally get a chance to show it in our crossovers and also the fact that we're all on one night. I think it's a binger's dream. It, I'm a binger, you know, whatever show I watch, I'm a binger. And even when we're in three different nights, I always thought that people would so enjoy it if they could see our relationships and how we just intertwine. And um, if you're a One Chicago fan, you're about to get your ride. This is the ride of a century. He's learned a lot. I mean, he's gone through a lot of, uh, 
a lot of um, tragic uh, storylines actually to grow and uh, he's been the attending now so he's had this superior position where he's taken on a lot more responsibility other than himself and I think it has changed his ways in certain in a certain sense but he's still the will that we always you know hope for that will that will challenge anything for the good of his patients and do whatever he needs to do but in terms of a relationship I think yeah and uh, he is ready to settle down Well, the stakes for an ED are always high. No one comes here on a good day. Um, as far as preparing for for that environment, I always I still we use I use a resource at Cook County that we can go and trail a doctor, and Shadow still and his name's Dr. Dennis. He helped us get the show started medically, uh, and I always call him or uh, whoever's available to go through my script. Bob and Bergstrom is another um, technical advisor that. I'll go through the whole script. I'll say, okay, at this point, where should my eyes be? What would I know at this point? Um, and I basically score the entire script before we even start shooting, and that is essential for me. We're very excited that they're all on the same night this year. Uh, med will start it off, and then fire, and then PD. And we're gonna capitalize on that, um, and our second, our second episode will be a part of a major crossover in which fire will start, then med, then PD. We yeah, that's just... Yeah. yeah, I guess for the fans that, that watch all three shows, this is a real treat for them. I, I, and, uh, and they're probably gonna need hand masseuses for the Twitterers. I mean, they're gonna be... Three hours of tweeting is quite a bit. Um, yeah, no, it's, 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 it's really exciting. So right off the bat, season four, we're answering all the questions that were left unanswered at the end of season three, and we're gonna be setting up a whole new bunch of things. So it's gonna be really exciting. Um, we've got new characters, a couple that we, we, we uh, introduced in the last episode of last season, and two new ones um, for this season. We're all on the same night this Wednesday, which we couldn't be happier for. It truly is gonna feel like one Chicago. I think we've seen her change I think we've seen her change a lot. I think we've, you know, the writers have given me opportunities to kind of uh, develop her more, make her more dimensional, and um, I'm very grateful for that opportunity because I think no one is ever just like, you know, just competitive or just sort of snarky. Like there's always like layers, and I think uh, especially people who kind of put on that. I don't think she's putting it on. I think she is really tough and sort of doesn't care too much about what people think, but I also think, um, I think that there's a misconception sometimes about people who are like that being cold hearted, you know, like you can be really tough and really like a hard ass, but also like care a lot about important things. And I think that's what Ava's like. I think she's, um, she's a much more caring person than you would think, but that doesn't mean that, you know, she's, um, I don't think that the, the toughness comes from like an insecurity or like putting it on or, you know, pretending like that is who she is, but, um, but there's other stuff to it. So yeah, I think we, you know, we get to see that develop. No, I, I think, I think it'll be, it'll be fun to have, you know, all the three shows in one night and to have the crossover, you know, early on in the season. I think that'll be really exciting for, you know, start with a bang, literally. <laughs> Learning from, uh, from the surgeons that we've gotten to meet with and, um, the people we have on set consulting, the doctors, everybody is like, it's been, it's, I don't know how they do it. It's, it's, they're like, um, they're rock stars. And it's, um, it's very humbling to say the least when you realize that they are like, <laughs> you know, they're doing such incredible work all the time and they have to make these life or death decisions and live with that one way or another. And, um, and we are playing dress up uh, and getting to learn from them. And it's, it's really, it's an honor to learn from them. Uh, and try and, and do it justice. But yeah, it's, it's been unbelievably rewarding to get a glimpse into that world. You know, I think out of all three seasons, Goodwin has been very solid. Um, she, where she has issues are in her private life, but her, her professional life, she's, she's an absolute lioness when it comes to the hospital what's best for the hospital, 
what's best for the patients, what's best for her staff. And I don't think that's changed. I think each season you see her fighting. Um, and again, where you see her vulnerability is in her personal life. But when she comes to work, it's all guns drawn. I, I don't think she suffers fools. Uh, I think that she really believes in the doctors, believes in her staff, and she will fight for them to the end. And she believes in patient care. Um, she's a very, um, she comes from a nursing background. Uh, so it's very important to her that people who uh, don't have access have the ability to come into med and, and get health care. You know, the, the thing that happens in the hospital, especially in the emergency room, is that you're dealing with extraordinarily committed, bright surgeons, doctors, nurses, and they really believe in what they're doing. And you do see us come together when we need to. Um, every time, you know, every moment, we're not always in agreement with one another, uh, but there is a moment where we listen, and I think that's important. What we do on the show is a reflection of what happens at, at large in hospitals around the country, where there are dedicated people who it is important to them that everyone has access to good health care. No, she has to come fly. She has to come right, you know, because she is running this metropolitan hospital. And she has to contend with a board who, at every step she wants to take to provide good health care, they're going to try to push her back to save money. Um, so when she goes to argue, she has to have on her, her outfit. Everyone has, on a, has a costume. You know, everyone, the firefighters, the nurses, doctors, you know, people that work in the grocery store, everyone has a uniform, and that uniform will, will tell you who they are and what they do. And so going into those high-powered high boardrooms, she has to present. And I think the way I'm dressed, and again, I have to say Susan Kaufman, Susan Kaufman, Susan Kaufman, she gives me like the fly clothes. It's great. It's really, you know, it really helps me walk in with this authority that is important for Sharon Goodwin. Having us on the same night, I think is a brilliant idea. And the crossovers, I think, will even make more of an impact because they're happening continuously. Yeah, we ended last season with a big proposal. Uh, and you will find out Natalie's answer, whether she said yes or whether she said no. We start off, you know, back in the hospital, back with things moving, as Chicago Med does. Um, you're going to see a lot of great uh, guest stars coming in. Um, we start off with a big crossover, our episode two. It is a big three-part crossover. I feel like my character has... Uh, changed and morphed in so many different ways. I mean, when she started the show off, she was pregnant and uh, grieving over her husband who had passed. And, you know, we saw her date and not really know what that looked like for her and how to do that with having a child and also still going through the grieving process as well. And now I feel like she's at a really good place where she is able to accept love into her life. She's kind of learned how to navigate having a kid and having a career and having a, a boyfriend, because I think that was something she struggled with last, last year too, was how do I hold my own as a woman in my job and hold my power while having a relationship within work because she felt that maybe she wasn't getting treated the same as her male counterparts, which I thought was like a really great and super topical um, storyline. So I feel like she's finally, the pieces are starting to fall in the right place for her. It's 
doesn't get easy seeing these horrific traumas come through or you know um, these heartbreaking stories that you see on the show and actually we start season one off on one of the patients that Natalie has it's actually one of my favorite stories um, that I think will yeah one of my favorites that we've had so far is a really beautiful heartbreaking touching uh, story and it, it involves it around love and um, heartbreak and it's just it's really beautiful so One Chicago is a brilliant concept that Dick Wolf created um, it's having three shows now on one night uh, one after the other. It does make it very movie-like. It's like a three-hour long <laughs> Chicago movie. Um, and now being on the same night, it's going to be a lot easier for all of us to cross in and out even more of each other's episodes. Um, and there's some type of genius that that man has when it comes to casting people as well because the one Chicago not only lives on screen, it also lives with all of us off screen, truly and genuinely. Um, everybody gets along and hangs out the way they do on the show. Um, it's actually kind of odd. I've never experienced anything like this before in my career. Everybody, it is like a big Chicago family out here. You should watch season four because there's going to be more trauma, more drama, more romance, more friendship, drama. There's so much to watch for. And hello, everybody wants to see what Natalie says to Will. So tune in. At the end of season three, we leave off with April and Ethan Choi being at odds. Um, in the very last episode, she actually walks away from him declaring that she's moving out um, because his sister's moving in. Uh, I think even though I, April, had been an advocate for Emily, um, I think that, you know, y you can only give someone so many chances and she kind of proved him right, all the things that he said about his sister. And so I'm more um, being protective of Ethan, I think, and mistrusting Emily. So yeah, they're pretty rocky. They're just agreeing to disagree, and there's a whole bunch of distance there. On the other end of the spectrum, at the end of the season, we have a different relationship between Will and Natalie um, looking like it's full of potential. There's a proposal. Um, that happened. We don't see her answer, so we don't really know, you know, if, if that's going to go anywhere, but um, definitely a very different relationship at this moment, energetically. I think April has definitely matured in the last three years. I think we saw her very youthful, at, at least when it comes to relationships with men. Um, you know, the first person that we saw her with was an old friend from high school. Then after that, it was this nice man, you know, the ex-athlete. Um, but he had a whole bunch of baggage and he, a child and all this other stuff. And she was very focused on herself um, until she had a miscarriage. And I think that was a very transformative experience for her. And she grew up pretty quickly through after that, through and after that. So um, now when you watch her be in relationship with Ethan, it's a much more mature kind of thing. You know, she's not quick to um, jump to conclusions. Even in this moment when she's at the end of season three, she's deciding to walk away there's still, you know that they love each other. You know that there's, there's, um, there's some, there's real concern for the well-being of, of him and his sister, right? So the concept of One Chicago, I think, was really brilliant. Um, and I, and it, it, it makes sense because you're looking at three different um, entities that 
do intersect occasionally, all very important pieces of the puzzle when it comes to, you know, who is showing up on the scene when things happen, the firemen and women. Um, and then, of course, the policemen are there. The PD has a sh always plays an important role. And then the hospital, you know, when bad things happen, um, people get sick, people get hurt or shot, they, they end up here um, at Med. So there is a lot of intersection of these stories. Um, and crossovers are the time where we get to really see them kind of magnified. Um, and yeah, you know, working all together in Chicago is, is really sweet. We have um, a little community and it translates definitely off screen. And I think, you know, the off screen relationships translate on screen as well. I think Chicago Wednesdays is a great opportunity for those diehard fans to just block out one night instead of having to sacrifice three nights of the week even though it's a three hour block all the shows back to back it's nice to have everything focused and then when there are overlapping storylines easier to follow because you don't have to remember what happened last week or three days ago so I think it was a great idea and I you know it's new so I'm just excited as excited as everyone else to see how um, it pans out, see how fans respond. And um, yeah, I think it's gonna be interesting, you know, live tweeting and then continuing those conversations on through the other shows. And I think it'll be fun. I think season four is going to be unlike anything that not only we've ever done in one chicago but anything that anyone has ever done in the history of television so i'm really excited to kind of feel that pulse the momentum of the shows going back to back um the mo the, the connection with fans i think will be even greater because we'll be live tweeting and we'll be responding to questions and we'll ha be having different like online events to you know tie it all together and um you know with met in particular you're gonna see a lot of your questions answered pretty soon uh, into the season and then there are other questions that are lingering right their characters figuring stuff out throughout there's a lot of tension um, of different kinds there's also a lot of current event topics being discussed that are so important and I'm so grateful to the writers for giving us juicy stuff to work with and talk about. It's going to be an exciting season. It's really going to be great.